call to meet in order. I invite you to join me in the invocation. Dear Lord, we come to you in prayer asking for guidance in a time when we celebrate the freedom of the people of our nation in joy and expect. We ask for protection of all people, our military and our leaders. In times of concern, we ask for acceptance and love of all individuals as you have created us as equal. Let us move beyond hatred and discord and show respect to everyone. Make us the eyes and ears of the community so that we hear and see what is needed and let us make decisions that encourage us all to help one another. Lord, we ask this prayer in your name. Amen. 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 Tonight we have the honor of honoring one of our hometown uh, citizens. <laughs> Danico Autry was, I guess, born and raised here. I know you was raised here, born and raised here, and graduated from Albemarle High School. He has been a uh, great leader in our community recently as he held a camp at Albemarle Senior High School. And we appreciate all that you do and have done and hope you will continue to do in future years. Before I come out and make this presentation, I want to give council an opportunity to say anything they would like. Down, Dexter, you want to start? Well, I'll just say, actually, we all are very proud of you, Danico, uh, all of your accomplishments. Uh, more importantly than just being in the NFL, playing on the field, uh, one thing that we're proud of is that you're also a role model in, off the field as well, and that gives the kids something to look up to. So we just encourage you to keep up the good work. And Danico is one that, in, in my honest opinion, I can say that he would never forget where he came from. So. Avamar is a place he called home and probably will always call home. We're proud of you. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Ms. Hughes, Mr. Alder, do you think? I just would like to say thank you for being here tonight. I know, you know, you've got a busy schedule. Um, my son, Stuart Hughes, you may remember him from <laughs> Avamar High School. He speaks a lot of you. and. According to him, you made him decide to play football at Alabama High <laughs> School. So, um, but I do, um, I thought the article in the paper really talked about your passion um, for the community and for the children. And I think it's good for them to see somebody in your position come back and make a difference to the community that you came from. So thank you again for your time and for remembering where you came from. Sure. Uh, just to kind of reiterate what the two have said before, it's a, it's a pleasure, it's an honor to meet you. It's the first time we've actually had a chance to meet, and uh, I just want to uh, say thank you. Uh, thank you for, for you've gotten a lot of opportunities uh, to spend your summer, but you chose to come back to Albemarle, and uh, the newspaper article was truly inspirational, uh, talking about the fact where you got choked up, talking about uh, how blessed and fortunate you've been. So it's just a, it's a great honor to have you here, and we thank you. Two things I'd say is um, my son was right there, but you didn't encourage him to play football, which I'm glad. <laughs> Murphy Hall, he was not, he didn't play football, which is probably a good thing for me. Um, <clears throat> this year with all the graduating classes from the high schools in our county, Bill Josie, our new school superintendent, used Don't Forget Your Roots as part of his message to all of our graduates of this year in 17. And that has hit home. When I read the article and knowing what you did a couple of weeks ago, not forgetting the roots is so important. And so thank you for not forgetting your roots. I would say for you to now go break a leg, but you don't say that when you're playing football. <laughs> so <laughs> go be careful and do great things because you can. But thanks. Ms. Willie? Yeah, please don't break a leg. <laughs> I just want to say thanks, you know, somebody that has that kind of a commitment to the community. It's more rare than it used to be. Uh, it's good to see a lot of kids don't have any role models. Some of them have bad role models. So it's a great doing those kinds of things in the community. Those kids will remember that forever. I mean, that'll be something they'll remember when, they, when they're grown. So it, those types of things and commitment to kids, commitments to the community go way further I think than than we know than than you know. So, just thank you for your commitment and look forward to watching you on TV. <clears throat> Danica, if you'll meet me out here at the front, and anybody you want to bring up with you. <laughs> <laughs> Stand right out here.
Danica, this is a resolution adopted by our city council. Whereas Danica Autry began his football career in the hometown of Albemarle, North Carolina, where he excelled as an Albemarle High School Bulldog by completing his senior season with 104 solo tackles, 38 assists, 9 sacks, and 5 forced fumbles, and 4 fumble recoveries, and whereas Danico Autry has been named the All-Snap Defensive Player of the Year, as well as the Rocky River Conference Defensive Player of the Year, and played in the NCCA East-West All-Star Game, and whereas Danico Autry continued his football career while attending East Mississippi Community College while helping lead them to a 12-0 record, state championship, and NJCAA national title, and was named 2011 All-American First Team, and whereas Danico Autry transferred to play for the Mississippi State Bulldogs from 2012 to 2013 in an effort to keep that Bulldog pride he possessed alive where he played in 26 games while starting 23 and recording 73 total tackles, 16 tackles for loss, six sacks, three forced fumbles, all in his two-year career. And whereas Danico Autry was signed by the Oakland Raiders of the NFL on May 20th, 2014, after going undrafted in the 2014 NFL draft. And whereas Danico Autry has proven his love and passion for football by recording 50 solo tackles, 14 assists, five sacks, one safety, and two fumble recoveries. And whereas Danico Autry strives to give back to his hometown in hopes of spreading the same passion for the game as witnessed by his inaugural Danico Autry Youth Football Camp held on June 24, 2017 at Albemarle High School where over 100 kids, 100 kids were eagerly participating. And whereas Danico Audrey's success on the field continually represent the same values the city strives to instill and consider him as a role model for the youth and adolescent of Albemarle. Now therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city, city of Albemarle on behalf of the entire city re recognize Danico Autry with his resolution for outstanding accomplishment. Be it further resolved that the city council and the city of Albemarle does hereby adopt this resolution this the 10th day of July, 2017. It's just an honor to be here. Um, I'd like to thank the City Council for giving me this opportunity. Um, I want to give thanks to um, my parents, um, the community, um, just thank you guys. Thank you for everything you do. We appreciate it. City Council, let's make that official. I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the resolution. So moved. Motion by Council Member Townsend, second by Council Member Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Second item on the agenda is a <laughs> presentation of a retirement resolution to Jeffrey Dick. Jeffrey, come on up. For those of you who do not know, Jeffrey has operated our 70-year-old water treatment plant for many years and has kept it running very proficiently. We are in the process now of remodeling it and updating it, and he's going to leave us before we even get it completed. <laughs> so you've worked hard to get to this point, and we hate that you're not going to get a chance to see it as we get it going. Well, it'll work out well, Mr. Mayor. This, uh, it's an appreciation, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Jeffrey L. Digg, who on July 1st, 2017, retired from employment with the city of Albemarle after 25.25 years of loyal and faithful service. On behalf of the citizens of Albemarle, the mayor and the city council have authorized this certificate and extend best wishes for a well-earned rest and a long and happy life. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. We appreciate it. We now have multiple safety awards from the North Carolina Department of Labor, and I'll start with the fire department. Chief Oak. <clears throat> this is a certificate of safety achievement, first year silver, in recognition of the outstanding safety and health efforts of the City of Albemarle Fire Department that resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses and the promotion of safer working conditions in 2016. And I think Robert could talk about it. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Chief Bowen, Police Department. This is also a certificate of safety achievement, first year of silver, in recognition of the outstanding safety and health efforts of the City of Albemarle Police Department that resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses and the promotion of safer working conditions in 2016. <laughs> Public Utilities. This is a certificate of safety achievement for the second consecutive year silver in recognition of outstanding safety and health efforts of the City of Albemarle Public Utilities that resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses and promotion of safer working conditions in 2016. Mike? Thank you. Join your, join your others. Then. Robert, who's going to set for the city in general? This is a certificate of safety achievement, second consecutive year silver, in recognition of the outstanding safety and health efforts of the City of Albemarle that resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses and the promotion of the safer working conditions in 2016. Lisa, there she is. Certificate of Safety Achievement, second consecutive year gold in recognition of the outstanding safety and health efforts of the City of Albemarle Parks and Recreation Department that resulted in substantial reduction of injuries and illnesses and the promotion of a safer working condition in 2016. And I have one more. Robert, are you taking this one? Who's going to set this one? Christine. Christina. This is presented to the City of Albemarle Administration, Community Development, Engineering, and Housing for Outstanding Work in Accident Prevention, North Carolina Department of Labor for the sixth consecutive year. And to introduce everybody that may not know watching this program, this is Christina Offen. She's our Assistant City Manager. Robert Whitley, Human Resource Director. Sean Oak, Fire Chief. Danny Bowen, Police Chief. Mike Leonis, Public Utilities Director. And Lisa Kaiser, Parks and Recreation Director. Thank you all. Hey, before you come up, may yeah. we have a picture? With Danico, our city city council. Sure, come on I out here. We need to do that. Come on, Danico, you mind coming up for a picture? <laughs> for posterity's sake. Uh, come on out here, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry about that, but listen, everybody else have your picture made, right, Danico? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, uh, you get to stand on both sides of him. <laughs> Boy, do I put the here. Let me go on this side. <laughs> 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 Oh, wait a minute. 
get it, Joanne? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Danica. We appreciate you coming. <coughs> Martha, that's why I need to wear real heels. Yeah, <laughs> Martha's taller than I. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Number five, the approval of the minutes of the June. Yeah, Give him a minute to. Yeah, I know. I'm going to do one more now. Consider approval of the uh, June 12th regular session, June 12th closed session, June 13th adjourned session, and June 13th closed session minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Hall, second by Councilmember Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to entertain an <clears throat> agenda adjustment that we move item number 18 up to this location. It's a proclamation for the National Parks and Recreation Month. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Hall, second by Councilmember Whitley. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Kaiser, would you like to come up and uh, read the resolution or proclamation? <coughs> She's bringing the team with her. You got the entire team. Bring the whole team. Yes, I am. Where is it? Robert, can you pull that up? I mean, Robert. Oh, can you pull that up on the screen? Can I use this mouse to navigate, Owen? Yes. Up here? Okay. Thank you guys for um, letting us come this today. Um, so, Proclamation for National Park and Recreation Month, which is July, um, whereas the City of Albemarle Parks and Recreation Department program services and facilities are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including City of Albemarle and whereas the National Park and Recreation Association has set the theme as get your play on, highlighting the importance of health and well-being, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to in establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally and physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a, a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas parks and recreation programs are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecolo ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas City of Albemarle recognizes the benefits derived from park and recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved by City Council of the City of Albemarle, North Carolina, that July is recognized as Park and Recreation Month in Albemarle, North Carolina. Council, I would entertain a motion to adopt it. So moved. moved. Motion by Councilmember Hall, second by Councilmember Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you to all your staff and everything you do for the city. Thanks I know you've got an overwhelming sure. job keep keeping up with our parks. Thank you for the shirts, and we appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that is here. Feel free to stay with us the entire meeting, but I will pause for a minute for anybody that wants to leave. I knew Parks and Rec wanted to leave. Thank you all for coming. Oh, look, everybody's going. Everybody. Safe travels. They know we're good hands. Thank you. Thank you.
was a good idea there. Can we have a picture, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll make sure. Yeah, Joanne Hesse came. The one she, well, she was around in the community. She was an AD for a oh, while. Oh, yeah. She's from, she's from California. Are they married? Uh, Are they married? I know. He's yeah. Not yet. Not yet. The good thing that she came with. Yeah, kind of yeah. pretty good. They played the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, Brandon's mm-hmm. That'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, under announced allegations, we have a donation for a new signage at the E. E. Waddell Center. I think that uh, ah, Shanta's going to. It's Shanta. Shanta and Cedric. Sh- okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Officially ben. say your name for the record. I'm sorry, Shanta Watkins. Cedric Baldwin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Ferris, on behalf of the Friends of the E. E. Waddell Center, we are asking, well, what we have done is raise funds for a sign outside of the Waddell Center, which will, I think some of you got an email. Want to put some lights, oops, sorry, on top of it? Yep, you got it. Okay, <clears throat> to make it more visible for community members as they're riding by, we have actually raised funds to cover the cost and installation of the sign. We're asking for the city to provide just the electrical hookup. And there is there a lot electrical already out there, Cedric? Or will it have to come all the way from the building? I think I think it will from the building. First of all, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, oh. thank you. Any comments? But thank Any? you. Participating in our grill office is what raised the money for it, so thank you. <laughs> and oh, when they get ready yeah, to hold their next doing. barbecue kick kick uh, cook off, I encourage you to go over that helps raise funds for things like that's this right. that's they got my money this year. <laughs> Yeah, but you got your money's worth. Oh, no, don't even say that. <laughs> Council, have any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we do the electrical and accept the sign. So moved. Motion by Councilmember Hughes, so. second by Councilmember Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Number seven under announced delegations, Mr. David Creech. Preach and associates to discuss the police to headquarters renovation project. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, I'm David Creech and this is John Crawford. And it's an honor to be here, even though we're not being honored like the rest of your community <laughs> is. But uh, it's great to be here, great to be back. Uh, this is, uh, as I told Michael, uh, it's. Uh, and Mr. Michael, that uh, it's not often that we uh, are able to come back to a building that we uh, we designed uh, so many years later and, and present. So it's great to be here. Thank you for having us. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to those of you who don't know us, I wanted to introduce ourselves, introduce our firm, tell you a bit about um, who we are and, and what we do. Um, and... Uh, and then I, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor Michaels has asked us to talk a little bit afterwards about CM at risk. So uh, I'm going to begin by uh, telling you a little bit about our firm. Um, we're, we're not a huge firm. We're about 12 people. And uh, we're in Charlotte, and we kind of really use it as a, as a hub. Uh, our specialty is really working with smaller towns in the area. We've worked with uh, a number of towns. And I will tell you, this is, um, the City Hall is one that we're probably most proud of, of, uh, of any that we've done. Um, these are some examples of civic buildings in the area, and occasionally we'll do one out of the uh, out of the area. But primarily, our work is in North Carolina and the uh, the regions around uh, around Charlotte. And this is uh, kind of a representative graphic that shows you uh, you know what we've done in the area. Um, in addition to city halls, town halls, uh, we've really primarily focused on, uh, on, on police work. But um, before I get to that, uh, I do want to say that it was such a pleasure to, to work with, uh, with your folks here going through. <clears throat> it was a very tough addition to do a, a 30,000 square foot addition to a 7,000 square foot <laughs> building and, and have it um, work well. But uh, we had some, some great public charrettes and got good input. And uh, uh, it's good to, good to be here. Um, 
We we are leaders in the um, in the region for law enforcement facility design, uh, and uh, we're excited that you're moving ahead with uh, and you, you're purchasing a new uh, or a, a building to convert into police station. We've done a lot of renovations. I'd say over half of our uh, law enforcement centers <coughs> have been renovations. So that's not new to us. We're we're very much. Uh, uh, aware of that. In fact, uh, you're kind of lucky to have the building that you have because quite often we, uh, uh, you know, begin with buildings like this uh, that you see in front of you. That was a building in Mount Holly. It was the old American Eford's Mill that had been neglected for years, water pouring in there, and uh, we uh, really turned it into this building with. Uh, some work and uh, it's been very very popular it's uh, it is their citizen center contains not only their city offices but their uh, their police department as well and not too far away from there uh, the, the building see on the left was a little warehouse building it used to be a sewing mill and, uh, and that was in Belmont and the uh, image on the right represents the uh, police department as it is today so that was that building kind of given new life. So we sometimes work in existing buildings. This was this office building um, was unable to be leased. This was in Waxhaw. So the um, uh, town of Waxhaw purchased the building and we uh, upfitted and put the uh, police department in that building. And as you can see, th these are some of the types of images we'll give you, gives you an idea of, of uh, in three dimensions of, of how the building comes together. So, Mint Hill, uh, this was their old town hall on the left. We did their new town hall, and uh, they wanted to turn that building <coughs> into a police building. So as you can see, we enhanced it a bit on the outside, uh, and that is their new police headquarters. So, occasionally we get a, a very large one to do. Uh, we have done a lot of work in Kannapolis. We were the architects for the North Carolina Research Campus in Kannapolis and worked up there for a good many years. So, when the city uh, wanted to build a new city hall and police and fire headquarters, uh, we did that building as well, and that finished up about uh, two years ago. Uh, occasionally, we work in our in our little town of charlotte but uh, uh it's very rare again we mostly work in the small towns but they did ask us to do a um the providence division of the charlotte mecklenburg police department so this is out on uh, woodlawn road near uh, near the home depot so so that's uh that's a bit about us and uh we're here to answer any any questions about uh about our firm and and what we do uh, John has been with us for, uh, he always has to remind me, uh, 12 years? Thank you. And John was, um, v you know, very involved in uh, the uh, uh, production and the construction of this building. And also, John has recently moved to Albemarle. So John's a, a citizen of Albemarle now, and he'll be involved in your project. So, Thank One you. of the things when we were looking at the buildings, we toured most or many of the police buildings in Charlotte. And the building that he talked about was the design that was adopted for all of their community offices. They, Even though he may not be the architect in all of them, their design is what they've used as they move forward with all the other buildings. Right. We saw a lot of things in those buildings that we really liked, and we're asking them to try to incorporate some of that into the building we're going to do. Uh, I mentioned earlier, and, and so did David, about a con construction manager at risk. That's before us tonight. We want to do that rather than what we've done in the past. This will be the first time we've done this uh, on any building we've done in the city. So I'm asking them to explain that to you, and then we have the RFQs that will go out after council considers it tonight and have plans to have it back the 27th and a selection and be back before us at the August meeting with who that construction manager will be. Very David good. or John, whoever wants to explain that. I'll start out. John is certainly better versed than I am. I'll give you some general overview. John can answer specific questions. But um, I would say 99% of our projects are done as CM at risk currently. Um, CM at risk, construction manager at risk, um, 
is 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 being done more often throughout North and South Carolina than the old design bid and then build and it's done for for a number of reasons one uh, it gives the opportunity for the uh, for you and the contractor to uh, to pre-qualify bidders so you're still getting bids on your project they are just pre-qualifying the bidders so they're not out in your parking lot at two o'clock and bids are due at 2:30, and they're getting bids from I've, you know I've never heard of of Joe's drywall, and but he's the low guy, and he puts it down and goes, boy, I hope they're going to be okay. They put it out to qualified drywall contractors and so forth that they're aware of, and uh, and it's an open book process, and they they'll share with you, and they open some how many packages? Some twenty something packages? Yeah, sometimes twenty something packages of bids. From various subcontractors, the uh, the main thing to emphasize is the uh, the construction manager at risk becomes a team player from the beginning. Uh, he becomes a uh, a cost consultant. Uh, you've got an existing building that um, you know it'd be, it'd be great to have a, a a qualified contractor in there taking a look. Uh, we know there are a couple little panels that maybe need some attention on the exterior of the building. Have them take a look at that. Um, but more importantly, be a part of the team. This is the list of things that you would like to do in the building. Here's your budget. Let's reconcile that. So you've got a team member from the very beginning who can look at what all of the wants are and uh, be sure that we're staying within budget. Otherwise, when we do it, we're working with a cost consultant that's independent. This way, we're all we're all three owner, seam at risk, and architect, all sort of moving forward as a, as a team. Is so, he our team well, player? Pardon me. Is he our team player? Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. He, he, Absolutely, he is. is. He actually works for yes. you. Yes, okay. that's one of the best yeah. advantages of this because it's somebody we have working for us that knows the process that can look after us because obviously we don't know what we're going to run into. Now, I'm going to say we're still going to run into change orders on this building <laughs> because we don't know that we tear out some what we're going to run into. But there's going to be change orders, but if we've got somebody like this looking after us, they can argue or negotiate the prices as we move forward. Is there still a general manager? They basically work as the general contractor. Okay, so this is in, it's in similar to the general manager. Yeah. The good thing and he just them. organizes and, and schedules and arranges for the subs. That's correct. Instead of having a general manager. That's right. correct. That's and and the, not, the good thing, too, from a cost estimator versus a, a steam at risk is they're in the market currently. A estimator, you know, they're pulling from data that happened a year ago or six months ago. Yeah. And so the market, especially in today's world, how it changes so drastically, they're more up to tune with that. And as David was saying with the, the – um, qualifications what they do is they give a list of you know 10 items that they want to look at whether it's how many jobs do you have what's your financial backing you know things like that to where they can go and qualify people that they know they can depend on to be there from start to finish as well um, and the other thing too that we like to promote a lot of times with CM at risk is you can put in there a qualification that we would like 20% of our participation to be somewhere within Stanley County, mm -hmm. for instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can bring yeah. the money back to Stanley County mm -hmm. and not, you know, if the firm's from Charlotte, right. you know, sort of thing, uh, Midtown. So that's another good opportunity that we have that we do a lot of times with uh, uh, construction managers is what's that. How, how long has this been the new norm using CM at risk? Like David said, probably out of the last 10 years, 90% of our work has been with CM at risk. Um, now, it varies if, you know, for like the school system in Mecklenburg County, they don't do CM at risk. They have a construction advisor or something that they do. So it's totally different than what that process is. We don't is. want to compare to that anyway. Yeah, that's, there's, no, there's no comparison to that. They, they literally, they have stake into the process as well. I think it's been, I think it's been longer, 10 years. I think it's been more and more like... <laughs> 12, 14 years. Okay. Yeah. So it's not new. So you uh, said 90% of like police facilities and things like that, 90% of the norm is using this role. I can only remember one project that we have done, you know, as a public bid. And I, you know, uh, 
in, in the last 12 or 14 years. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it got done, but it was not our, our smoothest project at all because, you know, the contractor comes on board. He is the, he's the low bidder, and his game is to try to get as much money out of you as the owner as possible. So he's not really a team player from the beginning. We were probably one of the last ones when we built this building yeah. before this process changed. Stop the light. And one of the things they do, like David said, is they go out and get bids from the people that they've qualified. So they are literally getting the bids. So it's not you have three bidders. They have their state guidelines that they have to follow as well. Mm -hmm. So if they don't get three bidders, then they have to push it off a week and get you know, whatever bids they get from that standpoint. And the good thing, too, is they work very hard at making sure that they bring people to the table for the bidding process. And, Mr. Mayor, that's a good point. I think this is the, the last city hall that we did under the conventional design, bid, build way that I can think of. Can I ask you another, another question? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, with that, before this became the normal way of doing it, was there an interim period where a lot of entities like went ahead with the general contractor bid and he hired his subs, but they hired a consultant to oversee the general contractor? There was a time when, uh, you know, there was a time in the, in the 1980s when there was uh, just a construction manager. Mm -hmm. And the important thing was that it didn't have that at risk at the end of it because the at risk means essentially they're assuming the same risk that a general contractor does on a project and boy that added one more point of confusion in there because yeah. they they weren't accountable for anything yeah and uh and it and that process went away well i know some projects did they yeah didn't feel comfortable wanting to make sure things went well so they hired an additional person right to oversee the work in addition yeah. to the general contract and that clashed yeah that is correct Mayor, your honor just a point of information um just echo what the mayor was saying and, and what you said david when we built this facility we did not have one okay? right but i will say to my new colleagues at the dais <laughs> um, at the same time we were building this facility the county was building the jail and you all may remember before you were up here, everybody but Dexter and, and the mayor, the county was behind schedule and the county was way above the <clears throat> budget during their whole process and it got to be further and further and further behind. I will say that the reason we, though we did not have one of these the last time, right. the reason we did so well is that we had folks on staff that worked right with you all that were with you hand in hand, basically. John, John was with you, and right. David Bowers was with you a whole lot in that whole process because of their individual knowledge. Um, if, in fact, this is the norm now, particularly with law enforcement, particularly with law enforcement, um, I'm tickled that we're talking about it, though we didn't even have it last it's, time we did this. And, and I, I agree. You were lucky in this process, as I remember, Michael, the the bids for this one, you had a, a great list of uh, general contractors that bid on this project, and the bids were very very tight, and um, and that you know really gives you a, you know a good peace of mind that whoever you pick, and you got, you had a good contractor, did a good job, mm -hmm. and he followed through, and he got got things done, and uh, but we've been to other communities back during the the bidding time where you've got a group of five guys all together and all of a sudden there's one guy down here that's low and you go wow what do you do and what i'm thinking about this particular one was from was not even from here not even from north carolina he was from new jersey and he had uh three projects in the area and two of them were in litigation oh. so that's the you, you kind of roll the dice a bit this way you can interview See them at risk. Decide who you want to work with, and uh, and make a choice. The, the property that we're looking at renovating over on West South Street. Yes, sir. Um, the floor plan. You know how it got that big open space. Yes, 
do you have any major concerns with the reinforcement as you go to close that that area up, you know, make a second level? No, and, and we've toured it. Um, we toured it two weeks ago, I think it was. Um, and there are going to be some structural things that you won't see to bring that building because there's certain categories depending on what the building type is. And with it being a bank going to a police station, the category from a code standpoint increases to where it has, it has to be a little more structurally sound. Um, but within that, I don't, I don't yeah, see it being a problem. Um, the, the thing that we'll have to work closely with um, you know, the floor plan is making sure, because it's going to have to probably have some lateral bracing that comes mm -hmm. down through there, so making sure we just put it at the right location. But filling in the floor should not be a problem. Yeah. Council, have any further questions? All right, before you in your packet, you have the uh, RFQ for the <coughs> construction manager at risk, and if council was ready to move forward with that, we will send that out tomorrow, but I would like to have a motion to move forward. Maybe a problem. Motion by Council Member Hall. Second. Second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you all. We look forward we to We have a very aggressive again. schedule, I know, so uh, hopefully we'll have that manager at risk on board at the August meeting and you can get started. Welcome great. to living in Albemarle. Thank you very much. I know. Way to move him up here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Have no unannounced delegations. Number nine, administrative reports. Your monthly departmental reports okay. are in the agenda. I forgot number eight. Right. Excuse me. I better go back to Katie. I forgot Katie and Nancy. Number eight, Katie Furr, Main Street Manager, to deliver the annual Main Street report. And Nancy Leip, who is the chairman of the ADDC, is with her. And Kelly Louder is going to. Oh, Kelly's that. hiding back there, too. <laughs> She's going to. Um, Nancy's going to kind of go over last year's plan of work and then this year's. But just I want to take a minute to thank you all for your support. Um, it's over the past nine months that I've been in this position. I really do appreciate it. I'm working hard for downtown development, whether that be economic development, events, just whatever it is to get um, people to our downtown streets and to get more businesses and working with our current businesses to put them in a better situation, whether that be a new building, whether that be ideas, strategies for their business. So um, again, I hope, hope we'll continue to see a lot of progress. Um, we, as you'll hear in just a minute, and you may have read um, in your agenda, we have a lot of um, plans for this year's plan of work um, that we're confident in that we can successfully obtain and, and, and accomplish. So I'll give it to Nancy Leip. All right. So um, if we look back of where we were a year ago, um, we had just shaken up the organization. Um, we had an interim Main Street manager. We had no bylaws. We had no, we had a memorandum of understanding. And um, the ADDC had a pretty healthy bank account. Um, and that's kind of where we started. Uh, so my goal was to not break anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as board chair, I didn't want to break anything, but we had to acknowledge that um, all of our operating documents needed to be updated. We had to acknowledge that um, we only had one functioning committee, which is the design committee, um, and we, so that's where we started. We agreed that we would not do any new events this year, last year, that we were just trying to get our ducks in a row, get everybody trained, get the committees up and running in a healthy way. And um, I think we've been pretty darn successful. Uh, the organization committee, which I'm the chair of, has revised the bylaws, handbook, and completing training of all our board members. Um, the design committee, shifted from away from doing grants um, towards managing our properties and looking at property improvements and they working with the mayor and um, Ross, Russ Hulshauser 
I can't ever see his name. Anyway, they were able to do a lot of improvements in our landscape of Liberty Gardens is beautiful. Um, the Courthouse Square is beautiful. We spent $30,000 um, uh, down at the Market Station doing some very needed repairs and electrical work. Um, and we paid off our loan. So um, they did a great job. Not only did, you know, everybody thinks about them with the flowers, but the amount of work that they put into that. We even had our angels up this Christmas, and that was a big deal. So. Um, Promotions committee uh, has is the hardest um, committee um, to get going. Uh, we uh, did manage to do meet all our objectives. Uh, we raised ninety five thousand dollars with our three events, um, with, to a budget of eighty seven thousand. So, thanks in large part to Katie being a good juggler and the promotions committee coming finally on board. Um, I think we've done a great job of keeping that together and, and allowing us to move forward with the new plan of work. Um, let's see. So what does next year look like? Well, we're, we're, we're not sitting on, well, we're going to do three events. Um, we want to do uh, some serious rebranding of the ADDC. Um, uh, the way I look at it is it's more volunteers, more sponsorship, and more events. We need to own that. We look at Katie to be a conduit, um, an advocate for us with the city of Albemarle. But we really need to own our events. Um, Katie, Katie does a great job with the city events, and she's a huge resource for all of our uh, things. But we're stepping up our game in terms of volunteers and teams and so on. And that's why I get Kelly here, because <laughs> yeah. you're going to have questions about some of these new events, and Kelly's the person that's going to be able to answer that. So um, in addition, uh, we're, we, like I said, we are rebranding ADDC. Um, the design committee has taken on the alleyway project. Uh, I think if you guys were at that breakfast, um, the Electricity's breakfast talked a little bit Bit about that. Um, we are continuing to improve our downtown properties. We've invested, um, planned another $32,000 in um, improvements uh, down at Market Station. We still need to paint. We still need to put gutters. We need to fix some doors. We've, we've, it's been neglected for far too long, and we are putting some major investment into that. We are also um, investing, or on committees to look at public art and the economic vitality committee um, has really uh, said that they want to personally be responsible traceable back to the economic vitality committee to expand and recruit two new businesses in downtown um, and the organization committee is looking to um, create a contest if you will we'll call it the main street challenge um, there were, think of Shark Tank, we, um, we actually award a year's rent and some startup to a small business that, comp that is, wins that contest. And so um, we, our first step is looking at grant monies and other ways that we can achieve that. We suspect we'll need to uh, raise about $10,000 to pull that one off. But um, the events, uh, we've added four new events. Um, the first one comes up in August, um, which is uh, we wanted to do an event to welcome back our college students. Um, Colleen is on our board. Dr. Keith is very excited to help us promote downtown Albemarle to her students, and she is even willing to bus them in for us. So we are looking at doing an event at Market Station August. 17th, um, where we will uh, bring the students in, have some food trucks up and down the street. Hopefully the businesses will have some offers of uh, special deals, but mainly we want to introduce those students to Albemarle in a very positive way. So um, we also have uh, coming up in October what we call the Scarecrow Competition. Um, we had originally thought maybe we would use the light poles, but because every light pole has a sign on it, they were not, you just didn't have enough space. So we're going to actually use the holes that are used by the Lions Club to tack down our 
scarecrows and but it's a great opportunity for businesses to decorate for nonprofits to raise some money and for us to be decorated for fall the whole month of October um, then we also are planning an Easter egg I, I call it an Easter egg hunt but it's more like a scavenger hunt kind of look right well I think we're gonna use it in down, all of downtown so it's not like you know the kids go to the field and run and collect all that they can collect they're actually gonna have to hunt for these things in downtown go back to October what when are we doing that did I miss a date the scarecrow yes um, it's the whole month of October okay. so the so the scarecrows will be up the whole month okay go ahead I'm sorry that's okay um, uh, Easter egg hunt is actually being uh, sponsored by Remax. Um, so when they came to us and said we really want to have an Easter egg hunt, we'll fund it. Let's just make it happen, and that's wonderful. And the big event that we want to talk about is um, we're calling it Back to the Beach or Return to the Beach. We have some wild, wonderful ideas that go well beyond just having um, some music and shag dancing. So uh, we're hoping that you guys will come on board with us on that event, um, but we really want to have an event that lasts all day, from the time the, the runners finish into the evening, an all-day event that is known, becomes known regionally and not just an Albemarle kind of event that we can actually expand over time, not shrink over time, which is what happened to each blast. So, um, do you want to talk? Yeah, talk. You know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, Eureka. Um, and then you have a meeting. So today we had a meeting and I didn't share it with everyone, but um, Katie and Nancy and Michael and I all talked. And so my vision for the beach blast, um, if you can just picture, stand in the square looking West, Down the hill. yeah, West Main Street, um, and on your left, in front of like the courthouse, we want a Ferris wheel, like a true Ferris wheel. Um, I mean, we're not we're 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 trying to do it right, right? So go big or go home. So we want a Ferris wheel, and then we um, envision having sand volleyball, like beach volleyball, in the street. So have several courts and get with, like, AAU or someone to um, have a tournament that weekend, and they'll be doing it in the streets of Albemarle, which we will incorporate it into Beach Blast. Um, and keep coming this way and of course we're going to have a band we we hadn't figured out the genre i know people want to shag so maybe somebody who can do a little everything and we'll have the dance floor and the band and a beer garden and food trucks and bicycle rentals i mean we're we're throwing out different ideas but we want to make it very much beach like and um the sand and all you know when the volleyball is not happening we can have bocce ball or whatever people play when they're at the beach on the sand and of course, it's a natural thing for kids to play in. Um, but that way it lasts throughout the day. So you start with the runners, and we talked about maybe setting up some spots for the runners to go shower that have come from out of town. But we're also thinking with the, you know, the volleyball tournament, if we can get in with an AAU or, or a bigger organization, well, those folks are going to bring in competitors from all over. And it could be that those folks will be staying at our hotels and eating at our restaurants and generating revenue that way. So we do want to think outside the box and not just do what's always been done. That's just not my thing. And since I'm over the promotions committee, I went to them and I said, this this is what this is what I thought about the other night. Like literally sat up in my bed and had this like vision. So I was like, gonna share it. So that is my idea. Do you have the date? When do we do? Is that we have that the first weekend in May? Is that right? It's whenever the race is. Okay. We're planning on doing a race day, but we will have to have a rain date because. Yeah, we will plan in advance a backup rain date because of the sand. And, so we think whenever the race is. Yes. Well, as long as it's going to take to put together, it's going to be very hard to, can, to do a rain date because you're probably looking at at least a day. To put all the sand in and set up a Ferris wheel. Well, you know, those so, forecasters give you three days. <laughs> and it's May. It's not July. And we'll all pray. I appreciate all that's right. And the ADDC's had real good luck with weather. <laughs> Have you ever given thought to, um, I think a few years back we had uh, 
thought concept of bringing in that slide the city. Have you ever we heard did. That? We did talk about that too. About that. Um, and the research I've done, I think you sort of have to be accepted by them. It has to be large enough okay. to to make it worth their while. Okay. Okay. Um, but we are we're still considering that. I love it. Well. <laughs> well, they basically said that they will come and do it for us. Yeah. We have to um, promise that we would provide, like the, some of the, the city staff and Ross, and <laughs> um, to to help with the barricading and this and that, some of the the labor. And then, um, Mike, I'll forward you the email. Was it thirty five thousand dollars that we have to pay up front? Yeah, but, 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 Dexter, hold on, don't lose it. But it, that was like for, that was be the equivalent of a thousand tickets being bought. So could we make that money up? I mean, it would be huge. Mm-hmm. So could we make that? I mean, that would, I mean, that's a thousand tickets. I mean, my family, we would buy five already. Right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm just like thinking of who's in my family and my friends, and then your, yeah. your circle of friends, and da 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 da. Like, it grows. Like, a thousand's not that many people for such a big slide the city event I think it lets you slide for how many hours it depends so the pricing it starts at 25 dollars if you want to do it like one time i think if you want uh yeah. you know all non as many unlimited rides it go or slides it goes up to 58 dollars it's 25 to 58 dollars so it's it's not i mean it's but it slides for and they normally sl- sell out in a lot of places. Right. Hey, and then you don't have to worry about we the rain. Great and we do have, and that was another thing. We had to have a good heel, and we got we have water regardless. Don't have to worry about so, the rain. They pay beach volleyball in the rain. Right. Buy a That's ticket right. for the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably buy a ticket for you, Chris. But, so, so, I mean, that's, and that really was, I just got that information like this afternoon. Yeah, perfect so. perfect well, place, slide from the square as far as yeah. you can go. Oh, yeah. As far as you can go. How long, do you, do you know how long their slides normally are? How long the length is? It's just it, no, somebody know. said a quarter mile. No, I don't know. It might actually. I mean, is it? Probably. That's probably about right. That's probably about right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. That would take you all the way down. Right? Be, yeah, but I mean, and and yeah, I'm Google telling. like slide the city. You'll see like a little video. I mean, look. It, it's uh, neat. What's the liability? Yeah, well, how much is a liability policy? I mean, I haven't gotten all there. <laughs> but, what's the liability? Uh, we would have to see if they include liability. I'd be surprised if they don't include liability. It's probably in the 35000 Yeah. yeah. Probably is for that much. Sign a waiver. Sign a waiver. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> Council, have any questions? Well, I just got a comment, Mayor, if I may. I'm, I'm just really excited to, to hear the kind of the vision of where, where y'all want to go. I've said for a long time, and I think many of us have said before, that in order for us to, to, to be a hit as far as the region, the state, you know, the, even the county, so to speak, we have to consolidate our activities. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have a, have a run in the morning, and then we, the next weekend we have – and I'm not bashing anybody. I'm just saying that if we want to make a hit, if we want people to drive from out of town, from out of county, from even out of, out of state – we need to have all day events. Same thing goes with the with the Christmas deal. You know, if we can somehow start thinking about the Christmas parade, uh, a downtown Christmas, all being in the same day, and just have all the shops, all the stuff going on at the same time, I just I personally think it will make a bigger impact. I think you have a larger draw. I think it'll be more successful. And I think people that that'll be an annual uh, event that people want to come to. So I appreciate your thinking that forward. Just because I have an audience, okay, and y'all are who you are. Last year at, and again, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm just passing on something to the people that can do something with it. Last year at the Outdoor Bonanza, I had somebody that came to me that said, if we had something for, and this was a guy from out of town, he said, if, if we had something for my wife and children to have done today here in town, while I was down here drinking beer and eating hamburgers and wondering if I was going to win, we would have come and stayed the whole weekend here. Now, the person didn't live far off, but if we would have had something. So it's, we have a captive audience already when we do Outdoor Bonanza. So right, and, and I know that Tyra's business <coughs> and the gallery, we do a great job on that day. That day. Because they drop their wives off and they're right. shopping. So it might be that, not that we have to have another promotional event, but we already have people downtown so if we can go further with that, that would be I great. Think the too. wine festival is another. The same thing with the wine festival. The people there um, said, "Okay, now it's over. Now what? <laughs> you know, at four o'clock when or six, whatever time it closes. Now where do we go?" Um, 
Tiffany's did it this right. Party. <laughs> Further questions, Council? I'm just tickled. This council, we, we put a little bit of money into the budget to help this year. Are we all on board? <laughs> if they can make this slide and all come together to helping them, sure, with some yes. money, which yes. may mean you have to come up with a little bit more than yes. what we got, it depends yes. on what kind of sponsors they get. Right, it'll be yes. worth it. Absolutely, okay. yes, it's worth it. Okay, thanks for your support. Thank you. That's big. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ministry reports number nine. Your monthly departmental reports are in your agenda. Anyone have any questions? I have two things that need to be changed or added. Just <laughs> the Lincoln City stakes need to be corrected. And the Lincoln, the Lincoln, You're talking about calendar. We're on reports right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything on departmental reports? Okay. Here and now, move on to the <clears throat> calendar. Municipal calendar, and let's see what Ms. Hall is wanting to correct. Did she leave? Uh, Electra Cities? Uh, Electra Cities 10 through 13. It's got it as 9 through 12. Yeah. 10 through 13. Yeah, it starts on the 10th. That's probably my fault. I apologize for that. That's right. You didn't. And what was the other one she said? She didn't. she didn't. She started to say something about the Technically, league. Technically, it may be nine, but we didn't plan to go down till the tenth. I think is what it was. There may be something it's on Thursday. Well, we're going to go down on Thursday, the... weren't we? That may be it. I got ten through thirteen. That's what I've got. I think she's talking about the league meeting is not on the calendar at all. Okay. Okay. And I think council's already had that in their agenda and already made arrangements to book their dates. That is in Greenville this year, if council remembers that. Any questions other than that on the calendar? Did the, did the RPO date change for September? The 9th the 12th, right? September? That's right. It's the 10th through the 13th. No, I had it on my calendar for the 14th. It's Thursday through Sunday. Well, here it's on the 21st. I thought RPA was always on third on uh, and won't we be in Greenville on, on uh, Thursday? It is the third Thursday. Oh, I'll check. Be the twenty-first. Third Thursday would be the twenty-first. But we're in that the we're at the league meeting. At that yeah, the league time. is the twentieth through the twenty-third. All right, I'll check. I'll check with Dana. Sorry. All right, number eleven. Un unfinished business consider appointments to the city boards and commissions um, first one was we talked about last time a convention convention visitors bureau we had mentioned the name that person cannot accept that because of uh, a conflict with some of his business mr townsend has stated that he would uh, be willing to serve on that committee if council so Agreeable. Uh, appoint. <laughs> appoint him. <laughs> Don't a motion by Councilmember Hall to appoint Second. Councilmember Townsend to the Commission and Visitors Bureau. Second by Councilmember Bramlett. Further discussion? Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Dexter. Historic resources. At the last meeting, we had tentatively uh, said that we would appoint David Scarborough if he agreed to accept it and Mr. Bramley has talked to them. He does agree to it, so we need to take an official vote on that. I move we accept David Scarborough. Second. Appoint David Scarborough. Motion by Councilmember Bramlett, second by Councilmember Whitley. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Before we uh, came in here, somebody had to ask if could we delay a vote on that because they were waiting on an answer from one of these uh, Got it. people. You do have it? We're good. Are you ready to? Yeah. <coughs> okay, then you make your motion. Um, I would like to nominate Lynn Plummer um, to serve on the Historic Resource Commission. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Hughes, second by Councilmember Hall. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. That leaves one more vacancy. Uh, and you, Pat, have, you have two more interest. Pat, Pat would like to do that. Uh, yes, but but if somebody else, uh, it's I would move that we appoint Pat Bramlett. 
I have a motion by Council Member Hall to appoint Pat Bramlett. Second. Second. Second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion? Before we vote on that, I need a motion to excuse Council Member Bramlett from voting. I move that we excuse. Next <laughs> Sunday. Motion Sunday. by Council Member Hall to excuse Council Member Bramlett. Second. Second by Council Member Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Councilmember Bramlett, I checked with the School of Government on this. Yes. It is totally legal. They do say that if some an appeal comes to us from that HRC, that you would be excused in any case of that voting also. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to the original motion. I have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Pat Bramlett. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Board of Adjustment, we have three names to consider. We have three names or three positions to fill. Those three names are David Rudisell, Chad, Chad Atwater, and Michelle Cummings. Will you accept a motion for all three of them at one time? Moved. So moved. Motion by Councilmember Hall to Second. point all three. Second by Councilmember Aldridge. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. That leaves us with one vacancy on the Parks and Rec District 2, and I, we don't have anyone to, to recommend it that at that time, at this time. Okay. Uh, we need to reach out to these three Board of Adjustments. Uh, sure. And, and, and I guess we need to clarify also, Ms. Hall, in your motion, alternate one, two, and three. And, and vote on that. So look, if you will give me another motion, which one position they're going to fill. Then why don't we take them? It would be easiest for me if we just did them in alphabetical order that that Atwater, Cummings, and Rudisell. Okay. That's Atwater it. would be number one. Cummings. Cummings would be number two. Rudisell would be number three. That, that's okay. And I need a second on that motion. Second. Second by Council Member Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And there's a meeting when? <laughs> now, we need to contact them. I think they meet Thursday night, Mr. Robinson. Thursday night, let them know they have a, have a meeting. Where is it? It will be uh, here at 7 o'clock. No, we'll, we'll look into it. I'm preferring to do some training with them first before they actually do a meeting. So we'll try okay. To, try to see if we can put together. Okay. 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 Will he get with them to tell them? Yeah, he, we, we'll send him a letter and he'll, he'll contact them. Under new business, number 12, consider calling for a public hearing for text amendment TA-17004. Move that we have that particular text amendment August 7th. And this is for the adult oh, daycare, right. correct, Mr. Robinson? R-10. Okay. I got a motion by Council Member second. Hall, second by Council Member mm -hmm. Whitley, further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Mr. Robinson, come on up. As I'm going through these, explain what they are so that everyone will know. Which one are we on now? All right, we just did 12. Number 13 is consider calling for a public hearing for conditional use permit application CUP 17004. And all of these public hearings we're looking to set for our next council meeting in August. CUP 17004 is a conditional use permit hearing for uh, the Coltrane Adult Daycare Center on Northeast Corridor. Um, right now that's tentatively they would like that to be scheduled in August. Um, they will have to go before planning board. We do have to get a completed application in from them with some more materials, but we're expecting that to all be coming shortly. Um, should they decide to push that off, we'll come back and, and request that you delay it for another month. Maybe President. I'll entertain a motion by Councilmember Hall that we set the public hearing for August 7th, isn't it? Yes. 7th? The date. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Number 14 is consider calling for a public hearing for proposed map amendment TA 17002. Text amendment, uh, uh, map amendment uh, TA, that should say MA 17002, excuse me. Uh, map amendment 17002, uh, that is uh, to the uh, Blanche, the three properties on Blanche Avenue. Um, the owners requested those be zoned to rezone from R10 to HID. 
Council, this is a little unique situation. Uh, the planning Board has recommended that we deny this, so it's at your point right now whether you want to establish a public hearing or not. Uh, and I understand he has not gone with the uh, Planning Board recommendation considered as a conditional use. That's correct. He wanted to have it, he has to have it rezoned okay. to proceed with Council, it. Council, it's your decision whether to set a public hearing or... I don't... Point. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not sure whether or not we can. I think we. I think in terms of scheduling it, you can determine when you want to schedule it. But I'm not. I think we have to do the public hearing for this, don't we? One way or the other. Mr. Beaver, am I wrong? If we got an application, uh, planning board recommended to deny. Does it not have to be heard one way or the other? Yeah, and and they can, you know they can approve it or they can deny. Right, right. But the hearing has to be held, correct? Correct. Okay. Just point of clarification. Okay, just clarifying, David, because that's not been previous practice. Yeah, uh, it ain't gonna hurt. Okay. It ain't gonna hurt. Okay. Ms. Hall? So, map amendment where it says TA seventeen double O two. That should say map amendment MA. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Should, uh, MA, yeah. That's so right. Just want to make sure that whenever. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move that we have the public hearing for the map amendment seventeen double O two on the seventh of August. I have a motion by Councilmember Hall. Second. Back at my council member Aldridge. Question, Mr. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Say he comes in in the next couple of days and decides he wants to do a conditional use permit. Would he have to go back through the process? We'd have to reset another public hearing? Yes, I'll have to do a conditional use. Yeah, and he's been told that, that he would have to do a call for public hearing and then conditional use uh, hearing for the conditional use permit. So, And there is no way to do set it this way that we will do it either or if he makes a decision next week. I'm... <sighs> I mean, I suppose you could call call for public hearing, but we don't have an application or any kind of intent that he's shown to do that. Uh, we did offer. Doing this? Has he not? He's asked he for appeal? zoning only. He's asked for zoning, not a conditional use. Yeah, rezoning. Okay. He's, he's asked for rezoning. The zoning boards. No, 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 no. Just a just a rezoning. There hasn't been any kind of uh, uh, judgment made. Uh, the the only uh, the only recommendation coming from the planning board, and that's advisory, and that's an advisory uh, advising that it be denied. And that's for your benefit. Uh, yeah, I'm still. There hasn't been any. No official decision has been made on this at this point. Is there a second? Do you have a second? Okay. I have a motion and a second on for continued discussion. Uh, thank you. So, just point of um, clarification. Mm -hmm. If we set the public hearing, which there's a motion to do so, mm -hmm. and he does come in, or whoever <clears throat> this person is, we call it a him. Mm -hmm. If he cut, if he does come in and wants to do a CUP, mm -hmm. then all we do with the public hearing on August 7th then would be um, either to post, I mean, we wouldn't, we would not have to have it. We would just cancel it, but what I'm, if, if he is trying to move quickly, right. that would mean we would not have it again until September. Uh, that's what oh, I was I, That's what you're trying, okay, I'm sorry. I just, and the, I and the applicant has been advised that. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, it is what it is. I mean, it, you know, I think we could hopefully be able to get it on the agenda to do a call for public hearing at that time, so we'd be able to proceed the next month. Could I, can I ask a question other than about the process of setting the public hearing? Sure. Yeah. Are all of these other properties around this property zone residential? Yes. Yeah, it's surrounded by R10. All right. That's what I just burnt one of them. Yeah, we did just That one that just burnt was on one of these parcels, right? Yeah, if you went out there to no, that, you, you, no. it was no, no, not this parcel. This this was the house. Uh, this was the house directly next to one of the parcels. Right. Well, I, could, I couldn't tell if it was yeah. on this parcel. Or next the, to if you know the, the property where the plant is, right there, there's a big patch of grass there, and then the house that was burnt on the other side of that. That patch of grass, the uh, plant, and then the next property down. <coughs> all three of those are what's being requested for uh, for HID. I just wanted to make sure I was reading that right. That everything around it is. Right. I, th I think this is something we, we could possibly <clears throat> see more of because many, many, many years ago <laughs> when these businesses were started, especially going up 52, um, there wasn't anything up there other than farmland. Right. And, you know, over the course of time, the you know, these businesses have been surrounded and... I think it's only our due diligence to look at it and be forthright in doing so. I don't want to get too much into hearing of it right now, but I mean, it's it's. I, I haven't I haven't really seen a, a CUP for an expansion of a use before. Albemarle has it. I'm not familiar with it, but um, it seems to be tailored specifically for items like this. So, um, yeah. 
we definitely could see more of them. <laughs> we just have to, you know, and we'll hear it that night, hear the citizens about putting a heavy industrial in a residential district. That That's... Mm -hmm. A heavy industrial, you could have a junkyard. You Is could have right? about anything. Yeah, it's, it's the, the HID is our least restrictive. You could have a chemical plant in there. I mean, there's all sorts of other stuff. I think that's the reason the planning board recommended now and pushing him toward a conditional use permit. But like I said, he's not come to us yet, so we'll, we'll continue with the process. What and would be the advantage of a conditional? I'm still a little bit foggy. The conditional use permit, uh, the way that the ordinance sets, establishes it is that council may approve an expansion of the existing use there. Right now he's grandfathered in. And if somebody buys it, they're grandfathered in, but they can't expand that use on any, any of the other property there. Uh, the conditional use permit would allow uh, that plant to expand on the property uh, with approval by council. For the use that it's used for, for, for it to continue its, it, it, and expand its existing use, um, uh, it, it wouldn't rezone the property, it wouldn't allow any of the other uses, it would just allow for an expansion of that. Yeah. Okay. All right, have a motion in the second. All in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. So we'll have a public hearing at the next meeting. Number 15, consider calling for a public hearing for the annexation of property for a new corporate park. I move approval. Motion by Councilmember Bramlett. Second. Second by Councilmember Whitley. Further <clears throat> discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 16, consider calling for a public hearing for a proposed map amendment, and that also will be MA. That's correct. 17003. And this will be to actually be the initial sign a zoning for the corporate park that we are would be annexing. That's correct. I entertain a motion. So move approved. Approved. Motion by Councilmember Dry, second by Councilmember Aldridge. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 17 is considered adoption of an ordinance 1716 to amend the annual operating budget. Mr. Parrish, you want to say anything about that? Uh, this is that issue that council discussed previously uh, about contributions to the retirement fund. <coughs> um, I guess, you know, council had talked about that before. If there's any questions, I'll try to answer, you know, beyond that. Or um, I think uh, Christina Alfin had also uh, given the last full report to council on that item. This is to put the money in, the, in there to, to pay for that. I entertain a motion. Motion for motion by Council Member Whitley. Second. Second by Council Member Townsend. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 18, we've already took an action. Number 19, discussion of the enacted Senate Bill 155 brunch bill. A couple of you asked it that we add this to the agenda and what this brunch bill is, it does a couple things for us or will we'll do a couple if council chooses to proceed. It was a bill to allow alcohol sales starting at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and the bill actually said that any city or county that wanted to do it had to take local action to adopt an ordinance to do this. So if council wants to proceed to do this, we need to instruct staff to bring an ordinance to us at our August meeting. Council, it's up for discussion. Do we, do we make a motion that, they, <coughs> that we ask them to do it, or do we just by consensus? No, I think we need to make a motion that we want them to bring an ordinance well, to I'll us. I'll start with, I'll make the motion we do the ordinance. Council Member Bramlett makes motion to bring back an ordinance Second. at the August meeting. Second by Council Member Dry. Further discussion? Yep. That's how. Is this for um, is this just for prepared and served, or is it for any store too? It's store. All. My understanding store is it's, it's all alcohol. Oh. So, so right now, <laughs> stores can't sell it until noon. Is that correct? That's correct. But they could if we approve. Right, it. Yeah, right, yes. and that would be that would be one of the whereas is in that resolution. Well, I, as I told a couple of you, we want to announce this. We want it out public that we're going to consider this at the August yeah. meeting. Yeah. Right. Uh, you never know. Someone may be against it, but we want them to know up front before right. we take any action. Right. Well, the big thing is, is in most of the most towns, and what the reason it's called brunch, 
was just those folks that wanted to have an alcoholic beverage with their lunch at 11 o'clock. I mean, you know, that's exactly when you see all the publicity about it. Mm -hmm. I think it probably have very little impact. I think so, too, yeah. Barry. But yeah, it's pro business, and I think with Pfeiffer coming, and I think Off the Square might consider doing some other things. And we've got a new restaurant coming down at Five Points. Football season's getting ready to start. I think it's I think it's a it's being very proactive for our city and looking forward I to Pfeiffer. We had a lot of the Charlotte thing, and it was talking about <coughs> the restaurants and all there. By the time they can sell it, they're making their move to the stadium, right? Yeah. So it's over with. So they're very interested, and, and some of you know, <coughs> I know one restaurant will open on Sunday when we have this. I have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. They will bring, staff will bring us a uh, ordinance at the August meeting. Now, there's a second ordinance they will also bring us at the August meeting that we have to correct an ordinance that we passed uh, probably a year ago about alcohol sales on the streets and sidewalks. Uh, this law makes some changes in that that does not comply with our ordinance, so we got to change that ordinance to comply with the state law. That'll also come to us at the August meeting. <coughs> Coming around the table, Mr. Ferris. <coughs> I don't have anything to add. Mr. Townsend. I have a few things, Mayor. Um, first thing being, um, a report that was created June 20th from one of our state representatives, um, and it's, it, it was entitled Require Mun Municipalities to Use Common Sense When Constructing State-Funded Sidewalks. Um, I, I know, I'm not sure if any other council members read that, but I read it in depth and I took offense to it. Um, first of all, whenever we construct sidewalks, we construct it to state standards. And then for our state representative to represent us, to say use common sense for something that we're doing that they created, you know, we should have issue with that. And then he went on to say that he's thinking about proposing legislation that would withhold funds for any municipality that construct, put a mailbox in the state standard designed sidewalk. You know, um, I don't know what we as a council should do about that, but to me, I don't think, I, I, I personally take that as a slap in the face to the city of Albemarle, especially when they tell us to use common sense. You know, um, yet along, and one thing I'm confused on is if we're talking about common sense, why would somebody go all the way to Raleigh and voice their concerns about sidewalks in the city of Albemarle without coming to our city manager or our um, public works department? Mm -hmm. That's not common sense, in my opinion. Well, we, we did hear from the gentleman that it was after everything was completed. And I do want to say that on the, that project, the <clears throat> plans were approved by the Department of Transportation. They had an inspector on the job every day. It was approved. It meets all requirements. You talked about the power bill money. You remember we made an yes. adjustment in our budget <laughs> because it did pass in the state's budget this year that no power bill money can be used if there's a mailbox, a, I believe it said a utility pole, a fire hydrant, or any or any other, is the way it was worded, you cannot use power bill funding to build that sidewalk. Well, that maybe, is in the state budget. Maybe our representative ought to use common sense before he go embarrassing the municipality that he represent. You know. um, next, I'd just like to commend the local business that was recognized on WBTV. Uh, this last week, I was looking at the news and I seen a feature story on a um, business called Amazing Blazing Fire Truck um, <laughs> with Mayos Baldwin and his wife Tarika. You know, I think think they to be commended for that. That's it. Thank you. Ms. Hughes? Um, this kind of goes along with us honoring Danico tonight. Um, I spoke with Eddie Wall today briefly, and they're going to have a flag football fundraiser at Albemarle High School. Um, on Friday, August 11th, which we will have a meeting before then. But, um, you know, he's really trying to work hard to get, I think, some of that bulldog spirit back up at the high school. Um, they're trying to get some of the old alumni back to play. 
<laughs> um, he's reached out like Jordan Morgan has committed to be one of the team captains, quarterback, and he's getting some other players in. So um, I think when we had a meeting back about Albemarle High School and what to do, you know, we talked about pride in your community, getting involved. And there's been some activity up there. They've had a clean up day, I think, at the end of the school year. There are these types of things going on. So I find it, you know, hopeful that um, positive things can come out of the football and the high school area. And I think, you know, it'd be good for us as council members to be part of this, to attend something like this. But it's, um, I think this is going to feed into the Gymboree afterwards that night or something. I think that's what they're trying to work on. But I'm sure it'll be publicized a lot in the coming weeks. But just good things coming out, I think. I was glad to see them. And I, ha I hate it's going to be the weekend we're out of town, but I'm glad that they're they are doing, doing Yeah. It's going to be the weekend that we're at Electric uh -huh. Cities, but I'm glad that they are doing that. In yeah. fact, we uh, we may have a request coming to us to help them with a few things up there. Uh, we well, can't give money, but right. maybe we can do a little in-kind to help them out. we got to see what restrictions we can do on in-kind okay. for a school also. Further? That's it. Mr. Alder? Uh, just to kind of reiterate what uh, Councilmember Townsend was talking about, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where uh, even even our even one of our elected county uh, representatives also shared uh, the same information that Councilmember Townsend was talking about on his Facebook page. So I take insult to that as well, and um, you know I don't don't appreciate it. And to the, what the mayor said, all those uh, specifications and standards are state mandated. Uh, it was nothing on the fault of our public works department, uh, anything like that. So I just think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's insane. So that's all I've got. Yes, sir. Since we're talking about the sidewalk, um, you know, just to point out a few other facts about that situation. Um, one, it was a sidewalk in an existing neighborhood. So there was just the the realities of dealing with existing utility poles fire hydrants uh mailboxes and other you know signs and other infrastructure that was already there um you know to options i guess would have been to put utilities underground which in an existing neighborhood would have been triple the cost of the project i, I don't know how much it would have added but it would have been cost prohibitive uh, and secondly i guess we could have moved the sidewalk back away uh from uh, those obstructions but as we, we all know that's an existing neighborhood the neighborhood and the road has been changed quite a bit um, with the development of the shopping centers and its connection out to 2427 so the folks out there uh, that live on that street you know gave up something some folks probably were not wild about a sidewalk in their yard and to to move back away from those obstructions that were there or those facilities that were already there would have taken more of their yard so we had a situation where a child was killed on that street mm -hmm. we were trying to respond to do our best to put make the sidewalk project work for us for the folks that would use it for the safety of the public and, and those are some other things that we as practical applicators of uh, local government services had to take into consideration when, when thinking about that project so it may not be ideal if you were creating the uh, sidewalk from scratch you got a planned neighborhood but that's the best way we could fit it in and still meet the needs of everybody involved thank you Ms. Hall um, it's back to a comment that you made about Albemarle um, about the school us helping with some in-kind <clears throat> We think we'll be able to do some of that. Before. We can't answer that until we see exactly what their request is. I gotcha. Is. Okay. Okay. Because that was something else I was going to ask. Okay. Um, and this is not necessarily right now, but I wanted it out before we, I forgot. Um, our application, you know, we talk all the time about go online and fill out an application if you want to volunteer. And somebody said to me, how could I fill out a an application if I didn't even know what boards and commissions are out there? So I would say that at some point in time, Michael, at some point in time, not tomorrow, but in the next couple of months, if we could make that much easier to somewhere on our website. I mean, I know I went as soon as I got that comment. I went and I went into the search bar and I went and need help on that kind of thing. But if it were somewhere on there so people don't have to do that. Um, we say all the time, please go on and fill out an application. Well, for what? I just think we've got to really make that more user-friendly. And to tag on that, maybe we could do a feature, a little story on each 
commission com yeah. board or just something. A little, maybe blurb. the paper could do something or Leon or something that just gives a little blurb about this is the board, this is when they meet, this is what they do. Just Good. to kind of educate. Because we're always going to run into, we need folks to fill out applications. I didn't know. Yeah, right. Um, another comment, we talked about this about a year and a half ago, and I think it just sort of nobody really wanted to do or push it. But I'm throwing it out there again, the use of golf carts in Albemarle. Um, a lot of places are doing that. We've got some town. We've got some towns in our county that are doing that. Um, it is if a person, when you think about the cost of buying one and upfitting it to the standard that would need to be, it would be done. We could attach a um, some kind of of tab on there that to be able to to get to be able to do it. You'd pay so much a, month, a year to be able to do it. Um, Locust does it. Y'all help me out. I think. Locust does it, Baden does it, Norwood does it. Um, you know, right now, and I was talking to the mayor a while ago, the, the statute right now says that on any road 45 miles an hour, is that right? 35 or less. 35 or less that it could be on those streets. 35 or less. Um, if you go with me to, to the beach, those of you that have beach property, you can't ride it on 17, but you cross 17. Um, I don't expect people will be leaving um, Eford Street trying to get over to um, to East Albemarle. I don't know. Well, they might. I don't know. But, you know, you've got crossings and that kind of thing. Um, I'd like for us to look at it, and, or at least to talk about it. Is that, is that, is that something that they have to actually have a tag, a North Carolina we, license plate on that? No, if they put a tag on it and meet the standards, they can drive them anywhere. No, this would be nothing but by ordinance by the city, and we, we would have to decide what requirements we're going to make them have. Are they going to have to have lights? Are they going to have to have mirrors? Uh, we uh, turn signals. We're going to have to make that decision, then adopt ordinance, and then establish a fee for getting the privilege license, although it's not a privilege, it's a registration license now, just to do it. It's a very minimal charge, uh, but they do pay a registration license so you know who has them and is doing them. There's some way to register them so the police don't have to worry about Sorry. Everybody doing it without without them being legal. They need to yes, register so we know who's doing it. Yeah. If now, nothing else, we go out on listserv and say, okay, who's doing them and what what is your what are you all making them do? There's a lot of cities doing them, and, and it was very popular, especially around the beach. All the beaches do it. Uh, I know council talked about this two years ago. There didn't seem to be an appetite at that time, but we only had one request. If we get requests. I don't, I don't see a, a really a big issue with it because I don't think it's going to be a, a big safety hazard because they're not going to be on the major roads. Right. It's just a totally a council decision whether you want to proceed with that or not. Well, we, we found out at the beach that there are different classifications of vehicle. You have a golf cart, which doesn't have lights, doesn't have a tag and all that. Then there's what's called a low-speed vehicle which is licensed through, it's got a tag on it, it's got signal lights, I believe. It's is that in South a, Carolina or is that North Carolina? It's in South Carolina okay. now. Okay. Well, North Carolina people. has the same thing. Okay. That, so, that's when you're required to have the lights and the tag and the insurance and everything. Yeah. So recently where we are, they approved those, but not golf cars. So, um, yeah, I'm all in favor of certainly considering it, but it can get a little more complicated than... than and I would think, think if you're going to do it, you would want to make them have some kind of insurance. And as far as an enforcement goes, uh, our police department, they would enforce that and write them a citation. They would appear in court just like any other traffic violation? Is that, it's is only it? a city ordinance. Okay. You, yes, you still write them a citation, but it's only a city ordinance. It's not a state law. <laughs> I think it's well worth the time just to do a listserv and to figure out what we've got going on in our community, in our area. Sorry about that, Chief. Just something else to add to your plate. To add cynicism and sarcasm, people <laughs> ought to walk <laughs> instead of golf cart. Everybody I know who runs a golf cart ought to be walking. <laughs> <laughs> they just do it to have it, it's a pleasure <laughs> vehicle. <laughs> it is not a, a method. It is not a method of locomotion. Ride a bicycle. Yeah. 
with that cynicism, I will say I understand, but I am ears and eyes for my constituents, and somebody has brought that to my how many, attention. They, how many people have asked you about it? Two different ones. Two. But I think after Leon talks about it tomorrow, it may be open for a lot of people. I don't know. May I go to my last sure. one? Sure. My last one is an, another person has asked, and before I send this person to do a request, I think logistically, I'll throw it to you all. One of the groups doing a fundraiser for um, Dancing with the Stars is doing something like they did last year on Ninth Street, and the request has come to me. Do you think council would allow for the closing of Ninth Street on a Friday evening? Now we have to look at, and I said how far and for how long, um, from PD all the way to Yadkin, and if we look at the length of that street, that is a, I mean, that's a thoroughfare. They are not um, dependent upon the closing to be able to have this fundraiser for the Dancing with the Stars. They're going to have it either way. It would just be a safety issue. Um, do we want to consider it? Do we want? Do I tell them what? What's the date on it? Um, 18th, maybe, of, of August. Okay. It's a Friday evening. I was just thinking about if there was a home football game at the high school with that. I mean, I think Ninth Street is a pretty <clears throat> major connecting point for a lot on of the people. east side. And, and for the hospital, when you think about it. I mean, a lot of people use Ninth Street. Um, I, don't, I, don't. I went to it last year. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people walking on the road. Um, you know, I don't know if there's something, not closing it, but to make people aware of the pedestrians that are going to be on that road. Because you don't, there's normally not people walking down that street. Right. And there were a lot of people walking. There's food, there's alcohol. You know, it just, I guess, more make people aware from that time period that there are people out walking. I don't know, maybe there's some cones that could be set. You know, or a sign or Maybe two the, that just says slow down, there is an event. Maybe the traffic uh, machine, the trailer, traffic trailer? You could put it on one end, and we don't have one for both yeah. ends, but we could do it on one end. Because well, cars move pretty quick down North They North, do, North. They, sh they sure do. And that, the thing about it is, it would be from like 7 to 10. And we think about that, is, it's very, it's heavy traffic. It's dark. And it is dark. Um, so. And the reason I'm bringing it tonight, just for your even consideration, they're going to do it either way, okay? But our next meeting is not till August 7th, and I thought, wait a minute, if there's got to be anything done, we need to at least talk about it so that folks will know the way to go. Should then I say that maybe, should I tell them, Mayor, <laughs> should I tell them <clears throat> we don't think that's the best thing to do, but... Wouldn't there be a lot of local traffic trying to get... That's what scares yeah. me. That's, you know. Unless I hear a motion otherwise, I think we can, the state police department can use their safety sign without any kind of action. Okay. If I just get them to contact this, is that what needs to happen? Council, is that your wishes? I just, it seems like there's so many people living there. You're going to have a lot of people coming in and out anyway mm -hmm. to get home. So, all right. If you could do it with signage. <clears throat> That all we can do is put a sign on. We can, I know we can put it on one end. Of, and let, I don't know where we would come up with anything for the other end. But could the could the event people put up a sign if they got permission in any of those um, yards there? That maybe it, and I don't know how you'd see it at night necessarily. I don't know if there's any lighting that would come down that they could just say you know event event in process. Um, watch for pedestrians or something just to kind of alert them that as they come down that street there's going to be people out walking and you know i, I don't know well slow the, that. just the, slow them down the flashing could be at either end yeah crazy question chief is there this is really crazy is there a does any other municipality have a the flashing sign that we might borrow to be able to put it at either end i know that really is going Thinking outside the box. Put a blue light on the pole at each end and turn it on. That, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's fine. Throwing you under the I, bus. I, 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 I'm sure we could look around and borrow a flashing sign from another municipality. 
I have a question if it's okay. We close Main Street. I don't see a big problem closing Ninth Street if it's in the interest of safety. I mean, hmm. I'll leave that up to y'all. But but if people are going to be on the street and it's dark, uh, I mean, even yeah. a, even a sign's no, not going to slow some people down. I, I, Close it except for local traffic. Is that what you would do? Or close it period. Close it period. Oh, if you're what, well, you can't it. stop. You got to let people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there, all traffic. You're going to know about it. You're yeah. probably going to be part of it anyway, but. I like the Chiefs' idea of closing it. Cause just I'm don't know what section you're talking about, whether the whole thing. From P that's the problem. She wanted it from PD to Yadkin because stuff's going to be going on, she said, at different points throughout the evening at different points. Is there anything going on between PD and Montgomery? Do we know? Yes, but it's at the very beginning. And, and it's, I mean, if we want, she will do the application and come and talk with us. I didn't want her to put her through that if we didn't well, think. Well, we're going to close the road. They need to come for us and ask, make, make the request. If part of that application, and I don't know what event or we're talking about, but part of the, we're talking about closing night, part of the application does put the burden, I think, on the applicant to make sure everyone on the street being closed is, is, is aware of it so that, you know, a police officer out there doesn't catch the brunt of somebody who didn't know and you know that that kind of thing or, or you know you all get a call about the event um, you know we put the burden on the applicant just to make sure everyone if they want to have the event to make sure everyone's aware of it who's going to be affected by it so whole so we have sidewalks none of that street has no, no, very okay. not very the part, the part from pd to montgomery does and just about one house long on ninth above montgomery Sorry to inundate you all with this, but I just well, knew if, if we needed to. If they want to make the request, they'll have to come for us at the August meeting to make the request. <clears throat> okay. Then I will tell them to do that, it, um, that there is some interest here and in what the option. I'll let them know what the options have been, though, but thank you. Then tell her if she wants to contact me and talk with me about it, I'll be glad to. I will probably will send her your way to begin with, Chief. Thank you. That's all. I'm sorry. That was just okay. too much. <laughs> Mr. Dry? Um, one thing. Uh, some of you may or may not be aware, but a few weeks ago we had uh, another blowout down at Happy Holler. Yes, we did. And you know, our folks react very well. That was at 3.30 in the morning, and by lunchtime they had it opened up for traffic. And um, I just, we are so fortunate to have wonderful people. Uh, they may not be happy when they go out mm -hmm. there at 3.30 in the morning, but uh, the job they do is exceptional. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that July 4th night? No, that Or was, July 5th night? No. No, it's it was it's June, June the oh, okay. 7th. Gotcha. June the 24th. Okay. June the 24th. That's right. I just need Anything to else? That's all. Right. Mr. Whitley? Took my grandson right here. I'm just going to challenge all the other council members if the ADDC does their beach thing. We buy tickets and we can race from, uh, <laughs> we can race from the square to Market Station. Yeah. See so who gets here first. Yeah. Yeah. We could charge more. We could charge extra for those. Um, I didn't really have anything to. Something happened. I was at the beach last week with family and, and all that. I was wearing my Albemarle shirt, of course. We were out on the beach. This lady came up uh, behind me and said, Are you from Albemarle? Or, or you just have a shirt or whatever. And I, said, <laughs> and I said, no, I'm from there. And she said, well, we're from Ohio, and we're down here camping. And we saw the sign, and we started to go through there and didn't have time. We wondered what there is to do there. <laughs> and I was on the beach, and it made me realize, do you all know what an elevator story is? Yes. <laughs> I need an elevator store better than the one I did. 60 seconds or less. <laughs> because, you know, of course, I gravitated immediately to Mar Mountain, Uari, National Forest, and all that, which is what she wanted. She was interested in camping and fishing and, and boating and that type of stuff. But it made me realize all the stuff we got going on here, I need to do a little better job of being prepared to, you know, tell somebody some of the stuff that's here in like 30 seconds before they glaze over. So, uh, but I thought that maybe point. some of the rest of us are. We just need to sharpen up our our thirty second elevator story. That's it, Mr. Brown. Uh, I had an Andy Warhol twenty seconds of fame when w I appeared before the county commission about the tax 
redistribution. <laughs> and I said, where did this come from? And Dexter, I feel the same way. <laughs> where on earth did that come from? And, and Martha Sue, forgive me for asking you the question I did, but he used in his paper, he said numerous people had complained about that. He were, used the word numerous. Yeah. I want to know how many is numerous. Mm -hmm. I, I still go back. Where did it come from? I went out and rode that street. I don't. I don't get to the issue anyhow. Uh, one issue you have with with golf carts, we have at the beach. I'm on the homeowners board down there. We have five year olds driving golf carts. State law. Right. State law takes care of that. You've one. got. You've got to do do something like that. Uh, the other thing is we had we uh, three uh, history programs. Uh, one already uh, held on the uh, how our cities and areas got their names. Our mayor and uh, councilman uh, Dexter did wonderful jobs on explaining how Albemarle and Kingville got their names. It was a well-attended program, uh, well-received. On July 20th, we have a, a program on the radio in, uh, in Albemarle. Uh, Bob Harris, who's quite well known in North Carolina, will be back here to appear with Leon and, and his partner in that. And then on August the 4th, we got a, a big one coming. It's sort of honoring Toby Webb. And Wade Smith is coming back to be the, the MC. Uh, Eddie Crutchfield's called about it. I mean, it just, it, it's gonna be, a, gonna be a big one. They have had programs honoring Toby and, and remembering and that sort of thing. But I think they've been mostly players. This one is for everybody. And, and I think that's, a, that's quite, a, quite a, an addition to, to what we're gonna be doing. Uh, so I, I'd just like to remind you of those, that's July 20th and August 4th. Where's the 4th and what the time? The 4th will be in the uh, in gymnasium at uh, cent the uh, Central School. At? What time? I don't know. That's fine. It, it'll, you, you'll hear a lot about it. Between Is that a Thursday? Days. What's that? Is that a Thursday night? Uh, I think 4th. so. I think it is. Never mind. I think it is. Yeah. No, it's Friday night. Oh, Friday night? I intend to be at that one, but can you? So can somebody record the one on 20th? I'm going to be gone. And I know I've heard a lot of people say they'd like to hear or see these. They, uh, I would love I to hear the radio station, station could record that. that don't you? Uh, that's Eddie Crutchfield. Well, I, I can't. I can't. The, the, the Toby Webb thing will be well taken care of. I can tell you that. Any further comments? Anyone in the audience have anything to bring before council? Hearing none, first I need to entertain a motion that when we move into the discussion of personnel, that we appoint Council Member Hughes as acting clerk. So moved. Motion by Council Member Hall. Second. Second by Council Member Whitley. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Number 20, I need to entertain a motion that we go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143, 318, 11, 3, 4, 5, and 6 for consultation with the attorney, discussion of economic development matters, discussion of real estate, and discussion of personnel. So moved. Motion by Council Member Dry. So. Second by Council Member Whitley. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Motion by Council Member Dry, second by Council Member Hughes. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Coming out of closed session, we have a couple motions to make. Number one, I'll entertain a motion that we go into, enter into a contract with Paul Whitfield for legal services. So moved. So moved. Motion by Council Member Hall, second by Council Member Bramlett. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, Michael, help me with this and make sure I don't get it wrong. We need to, enter, we need to, or do you need a motion on the one about the uh, gaming? Amend an ordinance. Yes, we need to do them more. Amend we need to ordinance. amend our current ordinance to include a moratorium on the enforcement of arcade games until the August meeting, at which time staff will bring us back a statute, a uh, change in ordinance to amend 
the number of machines that can be held to anything over three would be would require to be in a shopping center district. Is that clear, Michael? You know what we're doing. Yes. So if we we can have the ordinance for the August meeting. Uh, from there, you would set a public hearing to make the change in September. If you're wanting to actually advertise something to take action in August, you'd have to set the public hearing. And we need to include that in that in that motion to set a public hearing for August the seventh. Whoever wants to make the motion, we don't. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Motion by Councilmember Bramlett. Second. Second by Councilmember Hughes. Further discussion. And that included a moratorium on any existing. Includes the moratorium on any existing until that time. So the, right now, the moratorium is in effect. Yes. That they can remain open until we make adjustments to the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? My notes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Council, have anything else to come before us? Mr. Ferris, you know of anything else? I do not. I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn until our next scheduled meeting, August the 7th at 6 p.m. <laughs> motion by Council Member Hughes. Second. Second by Council Member Hall. <laughs> Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Yeah. Uh, those opposed? No. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>